this is a little bit unique. I'm not used to speaking to a group where I can't hear or see any of you. So I'm just going to assume you guys are super excited and cheering for me the whole time as you learn about Google reviews. So we'll just, we'll just assume that everyone is excited about Google. So this talk is really meant to focus on how you guys as home inspectors can leverage Google reviews and uh, specifically your Google business profile to help you get more leads. There's a lot to it. It's evolving constantly. Um, it, you know, it's a full-time job just to keep up with changes in the algorithm. And so we just want to bring as much value and, and information for you guys as possible. So today I want to focus on three things you must know to dominate your market and survive an upcoming recession. All right. So I assume that you are here uh, for a number of reasons. First, you know, you're taking your free time to learn more about how to run your business well. So you likely want to have a profitable business, right? You want to secure business in an economic recession. You want to be the best in the industry. You want to dominate your local market. And of course, it's always great when you can connect with other like-minded people that are trying to better themselves, better their business, right? So I'm going to take about 40 minutes to share what I can about profitability, dominating your competition with your Google business listing. Um, and then we're going to open it up for questions after that, because there's a, I know there is kind of a black box when we start talking about SEO and Google algorithms. So as AJ said, my name is Natalie Kiefer. Uh, my husband, Chris, and I, we are the owners of Boolean Review, and we work with home service businesses. So we have painters, electricians, um, HVAC, landscaping, hardscaping, and most recently home inspectors, where we help them get Google reviews and drive more leads. I'm going to show you a little bit more about our goals here for today. So I want to talk about why Google reviews are actually probably the number one lever that you can pull in your business that you may not be. So it's not something that gets as much attention as some other marketing tools, but Truly, it can be a very, very powerful lever for you. And from diving in in the last year or so, working with home inspectors, we've seen that there is a lot of um, opportunity for people to kind of rise up in their local markets because not everybody is kind of as a standard practice doing some of these things. I'm going to give you five R's to make sure you are leveraging those reviews properly. And then we're going to cover some next best steps that you can take Make sure your reviews are growing your business. Um, see how we can get connected if that's what you're interested in. Okay, so just a brief origin story about how we got into <laughs> so heavily into Google business. Um, but actually, even before I talk about that, I want to just mention, because I don't want to take for granted that everybody knows what we're talking about when we say Google business profile. So when we talk about searchability on Google, you can have searchability of your website, but that's going to be in a, a listing of websites, right? So that's going to be pages and pages and pages that Google says are the most to the least relevant related to your search. On top of that, you're going to have where Google says, this is, they call it the location pack or location finder. This is a local business that we think is the most relevant to what you're searching for. So this doesn't work if I'm searching for um, IT services that could be anywhere in the world, right? I don't really need to rank highly in my local market. But for home service businesses where you're going to people's homes, it's super important actually that you're coming up in that location pack. And so this is a separate kind of profile that you can file for and verify with Google saying this is your address you do business, or this is the area that you service. Here's your contact information. And this is actually a really common way that people will find your website, okay? So this is an example of that Google business profile, okay? So it's saying this is where we do business, right? Um, these are those reviews I've been talking about. It'll have a website, it'll have directions to you, all that kind of stuff. So this is the Google business profile separate from your website listing on Google. And this, you don't just get this automatically. This is where you have to request this from Google and verify it. 
So, um, in our background, Chris was actually, my husband, Chris was working for a, a painting company, a large regional painting company as a marketing director. They'd been in business for 18 years, Bend, Oregon. So a big population, 200,000 people in this little town. And when he started with them a few years ago, they had just opened two new business listings in new locations. So they wanted to grow, scale their business into multiple markets, um, but they just hadn't really ever leveraged Google reviews. They had 73 reviews after 18 years in business. So their main goal was that they wanted to be able to, to move this, sorry. Their main goal was that they wanted to be able to um, go into these new markets. And so after three years of implementing a software and figuring out what was going to work, what was not going to work and doing some split testing, their main listing had almost 900 reviews. And this was as of November. So now it does have 900. They have five different business listings in three different states. They have five additional Google listings from this primary one. 2,200 reviews, highest rated painting company in the country. And then they, they have a separate division of concrete coating. So the highest rated concrete coating company in the country. So with all of this, this is really where the bare bounds of our system was developed and where we learned a ton about how Google works and how to grow a local service business. So just want to reiterate, 2,100 plus new Google reviews, and that was across multiple business listings. So I know um, a lot of home inspectors actually may have um, the desire to have multiple listings on Google because you want to be in multiple areas, right? You want to be searchable in multiple areas. And I can talk more about that in a bit, but um, it's very important that you're actually giving equal attention to each of those business listings if you do have more than one. So, you know, for this business, they're averaging 700 new Google reviews each year. And it was huge for their business. Um, what we did in the process of learning a whole lot more about Google reviews, Google business profile, was actually talk to a bunch of experts from a number of different companies. Some of you may know, you know, some of these people are in marketing. Um, Elijah Ramsey, he's, uh, owner of Utility Helpers, works with um, is at a lot of home inspector conferences. What we did was talked with all of these individuals about what's working and what's not working for local service businesses on Google. So Ryan Stewart, he said, reviews are probably the biggest part of the local specific ranking factors. So this is where I always like to just go back to that idea of SEO. So search engine optimization. That can mean a lot of things to different people. But when we're talking about wanting to rank highly on a local specific search, um, so if you're looking for a home service where someone's coming to your home, you know, this, this gentleman, Ryan, is saying reviews are actually the biggest factor. And then Audrey Kirshner. Um, she works in marketing as well. She said, the number one problem is that I don't think business owners take reviews seriously enough. And I would say from my experience, it's usually uh, most common when it's a business that relies heavily on referrals. So when I've talked to some home inspectors, they say, I just don't focus on Google because I get all of my referrals from real estate agents and I don't get any traffic from Google. But that's kind of circular logic because you're not getting traffic from Google because you're not focusing on it. And you probably are focusing on nurturing those relationships with real estate agents. So this is where I say this might just be kind of an untapped um, lead source that there's a ton of opportunity for. I want to touch on just culture of reviews for just a second. So we have a three-year-old son. He loves, loves, loves fire trucks. And I was looking for this the other day and I was thinking reviews are such a huge part of our life that I think we, we almost, we don't even really intentionally look and process what we're interpreting from reviews here. But this is, so you know, this is with um, looking on Amazon, you can see 
okay, it's telling me like what age they're good for, you know, it's a small business, but it's kind of overwhelming because I can see, you know, this, this fire truck has 517 reviews, four and a half stars, but this one has, you know, a couple thousand, but it's four stars. So there's just a lot that we're trying to interpret. Google tries to make it a whole lot easier than that by making an algorithm very, very clear. So you can see the thing that um, matches most relevantly to what you're searching for. <clears throat> so we recently went to Orlando, Florida, and we were looking for not just a pizza shop. We were looking for the best pepperoni pizza. So my husband was talking to my five-year-old daughter. She loves pepperoni pizza and she only wants pepperoni. So she's like, I don't just want pizza. It has to be pepperoni pizza. So we're looking, where's the best pepperoni pizza? Now you can see, this is a recent thing that Google has started doing where it's actually indexing what people are saying in reviews. So on your, this is your location pack, remember? So you have your top three recommendations from Google and you'll see that this one has this, you know, little blue avatar saying a person mentioned that keyword. So clearly Google thinks that's a great indication that it's relevant to what you're looking for. And then you have maybe a business that's overall has a higher quantity of reviews, um, but maybe it doesn't match exactly, you know, the area you're at or those keywords. And so this is all going into that algorithm from Google. And I'm going to hit on what those high points are that Google is looking at. So this is all kind of why I would say the thesis is Google reviews are the most important thing for your business. If you're trying to grow, go into a new market or maintain that competitive edge in a market in a recession. So to run a profitable business, sales and marketing need to be doing three things very well. Getting leads, nurturing leads, closing leads, right? In some businesses, let's say it's a, it's a painting company we're working with. They get leads by running ads. They say, you know, we're going to put this in front of all people that are looking to paint their house, right? So that's how they're getting leads. And then they're nurturing leads by brand recognition and just kind of being in that person's line of sight all the time. And then they close the leads when that estimator goes to the house and actually talks to the consumer and answers all their questions and then signs them up with a contract, right? Home inspectors don't have that luxury of such a long stretch of time between getting the lead and closing the lead. So top of funnel and then the bottom of the funnel closing them is very, very fast. You have uh, someone purchasing a home they have a time crunch, right? They're not shopping around a whole lot for home inspectors. So, and even if I get a list of a few home inspectors from an agent, I'm going to go Google them. So that's where you're getting the lead. You're getting in front of the person. You don't have the luxury of probably having someone call you and, you know, get to know you, ask you lots of questions, do a bunch of price shopping and comparing, and then make a decision. They're probably relying very heavily on that gut instinct which goes back to where I was showing the fire trucks, right? And our culture of um, consumer culture with reviews. You're presenting everything about that brand, everything about your company, almost in that exact same moment that you're getting that lead. You're getting in front of them on Google and they need to be able to see, oh yeah, this is a legitimate looking business. They have fantastic reviews. Oh wow, look at how highly they're rated and all these nice things people are saying about them. And you go from getting that lead to closing that lead very, very quickly. So some different ways you can get leads, right? Tons of different ad strategies. The problem with, I would say, some of these ad strategies for home inspectors is you guys have a very time-sensitive task. Um, once again, it's not someone that's shopping around and it's not someone that just out of the blue is going to say, oh yeah, I think I do want to get that thing inspected, right? So, you know, popping up in Facebook ads when a person's not shopping for a home isn't going to help you. So these things can possibly work, but you guys rely very, very heavily on brand recognition and that referral, right? That, that social proof word of mouth referral. 
So, you know, other businesses can just kind of show up like this concrete business, right? They can just be present all the time. And then the person, you know, gets a wild hair that over a weekend, they're going to start doing some remodeling and they may take action, but you guys need to be there and ready to close right when they need you. So this is where I would say that your quantity of reviews is important. Okay. So quantity is what's going to get people reaching out to you, but your quality of reviews is what's actually going to close that business. So that person is going to be willing to pay you money because they see super high quality stories from other people having a great experience with you. So once again, quantity does matter. It's going to help you show up in that ranking. But when they click on your business and then they click through to your website or they click to call you, that quality of how you're presented online is what's going to get that person to sign up with you, even if you quote them a price a few hundred dollars higher than somebody else just quoted them. So we actually talked in a number of home service industries, we actually talked to estimators. Like I said, you know, a lot of businesses rely on having that discovery call or walking through a house with someone, giving them a quote, and then closing them. You guys don't have that. But these estimators were telling us, every single one of them told us, that having good Google reviews was worth an eight or a nine out of 10 on helping them close a deal. So if we sit with that, think about it in your industry. Once again, you guys don't have a long window of time between getting a lead and closing a lead. You actually have a very, very short time to capture their attention, probably with a search. And so getting that really, really high quality representation of yourself on your business profile is going to be very likely eight or nine out of 10, let's say, a factor in getting them to call you and, and schedule with you. So we go back to SEO, we go back to website, we go back to all the different ad sources. I would still say that your reviews are actually going to be weighed more heavily on getting them to follow up with you if it's the right kind of review. One other thing on this, I will also add, um, especially Google ads, they can be very, very effective with searchability. There's no doubt about it. Um, I don't know if, if all of you have experienced this though, but there has been a huge, huge increase in the cost of ads in the last year between Facebook and Google primarily. That cost has doubled or tripled in many, many industries. So those ads can be very effective in driving leads, but they're only going to work while you're paying for them. So Google ads are going to work when someone's searching in your area, they're going to work while you're paying. But if you stop paying, you're not showing up on the top of that list anymore. And so that's where more of the, the long game is having a really strong Google business profile that shows up organically ranking highly without paying for that ad, that sponsored ad spot at the top. All right, you guys have heard my thesis now. Google reviews are the most important thing for your business for all these reasons. Are all five-star reviews created equal though? Um, little known fact, after Thomas Jefferson said, all men are created equal, Abraham Lincoln said, not all reviews are created equal or something like that. <laughs> and don't believe everything you read on the internet just because there's a picture with a quote next to it. Hey, Natalie, we got yeah. a question from Greg. He asks, are you going to clarify further on Google verification? We are verified. However, we tried to show up with Oops. the verified check mark and all Google wanted was to sell us ads. Yeah. <laughs> also, can you clarify further the multiple listings for different areas? Is it yes. something you do in your profile or do you need to set up completely different profiles <clears throat> for all the Great extra questions. Areas? Yeah, great questions. And I saw something about Google Maps also. So going back high level, um, 
it used to be called Google My Business. Now they switch, they kind of rebranded within Google and now it's called Google Business Profile. So GBP is the same exact thing as your Google My Business Profile, okay? That's also what's gonna show up on any map search in Google. So if you search just in the search bar in Google, you're gonna get the location pack where it's recommending these are the things close to you. And then you're gonna get a bunch of websites listed. If you're searching and you click maps, it's going to show not just the top three, but it's going to show a bunch of relevant um, business profiles near you. Um, when So in the last year or so, this is when Google has made it um, a little more complicated for service area businesses to get verified. So I'm assuming just from talking to a lot of home inspectors that this might be, I think it was uh, Greg, you said, I think this is um, probably what's going on. So you can, you can verify your profile through Google by filling out the form saying, this is all the information about my business. And then they'll mail you a postcard at the address that you put in their system. And that postcard is going to have a verification code. And then you go on and you type in the code. What they're doing for all intents and purposes, what they're doing is verifying that the address that you put is a place that you're legally allowed to do business at. So that's why they want to mail it to you. So you can't use uh, you can't use a PO box or a mailbox, anything like that, um, like a shared workspace. It has to be a physical address that you can receive mail at. This gets tricky for service area businesses that don't have brick and mortar stores. So uh, um, a home inspector, you're not having people come to an office to meet you. You're going to them. Now, some have offices, right? But even then, if you have an office, it doesn't mean that you have traffic to it. So now Google has you check a spot that says you are a service area business. So you do put an address in, but that address is not publicly visible. So it's not going to like show a picture of your, your home or your apartment on Google where people think that's your business, right? So you're going to say, this is my address where I receive mail for this business, but I'm a service area business and I do business in this entire area, whether it's um, a name of a city or you can put zip codes or a number of things in there. If any of that stuff doesn't line up, Google has been suspending listings pretty aggressively. So I would say if someone's having an, and you know what, it can take a couple of weeks um, once you like re-verify to even get a response back. And they don't tell you this is where your mistake was. They just say, it doesn't meet our guidelines, please resubmit. So usually what I would do is um, look through, make sure that your address is hidden if you are not having people actually come to your physical location. And then you have to make sure that your business name, phone number, um, website is all consistently represented across the internet because Google thinks that's suspicious if you have different addresses or different phone numbers in different places. So that's my best advice. There's a lot of other troubleshooting we can do, but if someone's never had a publicly listed profile, sometimes it's honestly easier to start over <laughs> because if you made a mistake in that process, sometimes it can take a month or two just to troubleshoot. I see a little more chat. Um, Yep, and I'm seeing we did the postcard thing long ago. Oh, and then the uh, the check mark thing. That's if you have that. Yeah, that's a whole separate process to say that you're you're a business that Google has like verified customers with. Whole different process, and it, it that's not necessary for searchability. Um, as far as multiple listings. The same rules apply. So you're not actually doing that from the business listing that you own. You would be generating a second business listing and you would be saying, I now have a separate location or an employee or somehow a separate address that's doing business in a different area. And I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, it's like map examples and I'll show you why that might be important, but you do have to have a secondary valid uh, mailing address to create a new area and a new listing. Hopefully that answers all those questions. Oh, and I see a question. 
from Russell, UPS stores, and more recently, USPS, PO boxes, allow physical addresses. Is this also filtered? Um, long and short of it is that that's not going to work or it's very, very likely to get suspended. So I have heard people that have have been able to do that with like a, a UPS store physical address. But if there are multiple businesses that do that at that same location, that's very suspicious and Google will actually just suspend all of them. So you're kind of like gambling, assuming that nobody else is going to use that physical address. So that would be a very good um, example of where you would just want to probably use a home address and then hide the home address. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you some really, really great reviews and, and why they matter. So this is someone that, that recently started working with us. Um, one thing that you'll notice, this is not just someone saying they were professional, they were on time, right? Those things are all important, but this is somebody saying the employee's name, the service that was offered, radon testing, water testing, right? Versus an older review he had where it's saying professionalism, quality, responsiveness, value, right? Professionalism, quality, responsiveness, value. Those are all really great things for someone to see, but Google is way more likely to show this one as the most relevant because it's saying exactly what we want them to say, right? So a great review, this is kind of the anatomy of a great review, four or five stars. It's within the last three months, so it's relevant and recent. Pictures are great, not always going to happen with home inspectors because it's not like you're doing a before and after, but they might have, you know, pictures of your house or pictures of you working. That would be great. Uh, names of who was on that job. That's also really, really helpful. Stories, of course, that emotional appeal. It's going to get a much longer review out of that customer. And then mentioning your service. I would say this is a really critical one in your industry. So you can remember this from the five R's of online reviews. So here's where you could take notes. The five R's are rating, radius, recency, relevance, and response. So rating, we wanna see a 4.7 or higher. A lot of people that I talk with are panicked if they get anything but a five-star review. But the fact of the matter is that when you get to a certain point in your growth and in getting such a high quantity of reviews, you are not going to be able to keep a perfect five stars. Okay. So you don't want perfection to be that obstacle to progress, right? So I'm not going to ask someone unless I'm positive they're going to give me a five-star review. You don't need to worry about that. A four-star review that has a great story is actually probably more powerful than just a plain, you know, five-star rating. So 4.7 or higher is showing this is a, a really good, high quality business. Radius, this is where we're gonna get into some maps. Um, recency, this is where it really matters when that review was left. Okay, so this one, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time, but <laughs> this is a quote from one of the people we interviewed. Derek Michael, he said, if you're looking at a restaurant and they haven't gotten a review in six months, that's weird. <laughs> You're thinking, are they, have they been closed? Have they been remodeling? Did they have a new manager come in? What's going on? So there's never like a finish line with reviews. You don't just say, okay, I hit a hundred reviews and now I'm never going to ask for a review again. Because if you do that, there's no recent reviews and Google thinks that's pretty suspicious. And even if it does show up and you rank highly and Google, you know, post you in that top three, your consumer might think, that's weird. They haven't gotten any reviews recently. What's going on with that, right? Conversion rate. This is where we get to quantity. This is just a simple rule of thumb. If you have inspectors doing one job per day, you would want one inspector to equal one new review each week. If they're doing two reviews a day, or sorry, two inspections a day, you would expect to get probably two reviews each week per inspector. So if you're getting, if you have one or two inspectors and you're only getting, you know, one or two reviews per month, that means that there's probably a lot of growth potential there where you could be leveraging getting better feedback from your customers. Okay. 
Elijah Ramsey, utility helpers, he said, and this goes, you know, a little bit to the conversion, but the key thing is follow up. You have to have a system in place. Most people forget that most people want to help you, but you have to make it easy for them. Okay. So this is a sad reality in our world, but the research shows that if a website takes longer than three seconds to load, people will click away from it. So if there's a delay in anything, people are like, oh, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. Right. So you could have really, really, really happy, the customers, very, very happy, but you may have just made it a little bit too difficult for them to follow through. Like they didn't fully understand the instructions, or maybe you're using like a QR code system and they don't know how to scan a QR code, something like that. So make it easy for them because they do want to help you. All right, relevance of reviews. Google's number one goal with reviews is to find the actual relevant content that matters to their customer. If I get on my high horse for a minute, I get on my, my pedestal, I find it extremely frustrating when it's obvious that a business is trying to kind of play the system with Google. Um, you have a website that's just word stuffing like crazy. You know, they're saying their location and their service a thousand times and it's not natural or conversational. That, and you know what, Google's getting better and better at figuring that out. So what used to happen is that people would just create ridiculously long business names and listings to stuff every word that they thought would be relevant. And now Google says, you know, they're not going to factor in the name of the business as heavily because they knew people were doing that. What Google wants is to truly find the best answer to that person's search. Okay. So we can't really, we can't really game the system. Derek Michael said, we know that Google looks at the keywords in their reviews. So we're going to go back to the pepperoni pizza example. Okay. <clears throat> pizza extreme, good pepperoni pizza, even though they had a lower, oh no, they actually had a higher rating. They had 1.2 thousand reviews and it said good pepperoni pizza. So Google says, this is a fantastic relevant answer for this person's search. Okay. What if you were searching for good gluten-free pizza? Okay. Anything like that. This is where keyword searchability from reviews is just this completely like open game. Very few home inspectors are doing this. This is where you guys all now have some tools and knowledge to start getting better reviews that actually make a huge difference. So for you guys, it's one thing to rank highly when I'm looking for a home inspector near me. It's another thing to rank highly when I'm looking for a home inspector that does pool inspections or sewer soap ins inspections or a well inspection or something that's more specific because nobody else in your area is likely getting people to say those things. And so everybody's fighting to be that top ranked spot for home inspector. Be the only one in your area. This is my challenge to you. Be the only one fighting to rank highly for sewer scope inspection or mold or radon testing. Those things that maybe you know are the highest value to you, be found for those things and not just for general standard home inspections, okay? So we go back to this example of a really great home inspector review. Employee name, services versus, hey, five stars. That's great, right? Both of these are, are valuable reviews, but this is the one on the left. If someone's searching for radon testing near me, this one's going to show up because no other home inspector in this area is going to be ranking highly for a, a customer saying they had radon testing done. Okay, so just to illustrate this, um, so you can kind of see, and this goes a little bit into multiple listings, but we'll talk about that. So this is just an example. This is someone with a business in Salt Lake City. The blue spots are all of the places that they completed a job, let's say in a month, okay? So these are all the different parts in the, in the city that they did work in. Most systems are gonna get you two to 5% reviews. 
Ooh, I see a one star question. I'm going to come back to that. Okay. Um, so you get two to five, three to five percent of people are going to leave you a review. And this is whether you're using like a really simple automated system or whether you're manually asking them. So this can be the frustrating thing. You could have every inspector asking your people at every job and they may still only get 3% of people to follow through. It can be really frustrating because you're like, man, they told me they were going to leave me a review. It just maybe wasn't easy enough. Okay. So this is three to 5%. What if we could take that up to 20 or 25%? Now look at this difference in area that you covered. Actually, so this is 20 to 25%. Many, many home inspectors get at least 35% when they have a good system in place. So look at geographically how big this area is that you're going to be pulling reviews from, okay? So I just want to emphasize that again. This is kind of just the average. You're just asking for reviews, And this is what your area is going to look like when you're really pursuing in an automated and and streamlined way to get Google reviews. So this is where we look at quantity. We look at radius. What if we look at those keywords, though, relevance? What if this guy here is specifically searching for radon testing? If you only have 3% of your people leaving reviews, you're not coming up anywhere near that guy searching for radon testing. You're probably not even going to show up in that top three. Well, what if you have, you know, 25% of people leaving reviews? Great. That looks a lot better, right? You're way more likely to, to rank highly. What if you have someone that's next door, you know, down the street that said they got radon testing done? This is going to be the most relevant. It's going to be close proximity. It's going to have that social proof of really high rating. All of those things are going to tell Google that this is a fantastic recommendation to make for you. So this is going to show up. Less likely to show up even if you're up the street just because you had a five-star review, okay? And this is why I waited to address the one star because we're going to talk about <laughs> response. This is the fifth R. We added this recently um, because this was something that started becoming more apparent on Google forums that Google cares about how you respond to reviews. And not only does Google care, but it's a PR moment. It's an opportunity. So when you start asking everybody to leave you reviews, like I mentioned, you're inevitably not going to be able to keep a perfect five stars. You could have the best customer service in the world and a one star might sneak through there. So how do you respond? Because if you don't respond, that one star review gets amplified. In my opinion, if I'm looking on Google for a service near me and I see a bunch of unanswered one star reviews, I'm concerned. Okay. And I recently experienced this, my husband and I, we were finishing out our shop. That's where I'm at right now. We have office space within our shop at our house or outside of our house. And we wanted to find a drywall contractor. This is our industry. We should have known better. We hired somebody that was immediately available, but had pretty bad Google reviews, (laughs) honestly. And we looked and there were a few people saying, don't give this guy a deposit because he didn't show up for two weeks after we did. And we asked him about it and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a former employee. It was a neighbor's friend, you know, all this kind of stuff, all these stories about why the one-star review wasn't relevant. But we noticed he didn't respond. He wasn't willing to publicly defend his reputation and make a statement that he was trying to make it right. And guess what, guys? He didn't show up for a super long time after we gave him a deposit. It was exactly what the review said would happen. We learned from our mistake and made us that much more of big believers in Google reviews. So all that to say that those those negative reviews are going to happen and how you differentiate yourself from someone that actually maybe doesn't have great customer service is in how you respond. So it's important to acknowledge the person's concern do not be defensive or aggressive, right? You just state the facts. You say, we're so sorry this happened. I can see that this would have been extremely frustrating. We want to make it right. Please reach out to us at this number. This is the owner's phone number or something like that. Because you're, you're going to handle it privately, but you're going to publicly acknowledge, hey, there's something here. Now, if it's, um, 
if it's a one-star review, that's actually just not a valid review. Like let's say it's a former employee that was fired. Let's say it's a competitor. Those ones you want to, you want to flag on Google, you flag them and say that they're a conflict of interest. There's a little mark that you check. Um, it's really simple. You get five other people to do it and Google usually very quickly will take it down if it's an obvious conflict of interest. It's going to be even more obvious if they say, you know, oh, they don't pay their employees or something that has nothing to do with your service. It's automatically not a valid forum to be addressing that. So you just say, hey, um, you're going to flag it and you're going to say, you know, this, uh, this person is actually not a customer of ours, but here's our phone number. We want to call or we want you to call and we can discuss this. How are you getting customers to use keywords and reviews? Okay. I'm going to come back to that. <laughs> And then I saw we received a one-star review from someone. So from a person who was not my client, no address or other information provided, replied asking for information. It was a seller who did not like my findings. It did affect our five-star to a four-something and it had no real value, but Google left it. Even though I submitted to them, it was not valid. So this is a, this is a tough situation um, because you there's no obvious, like I said, they're not saying, Hey, I'm a former employee, or this is the name of the boss and I don't like him. Right. So in that situation, it is difficult because Google can't say for sure if you did or did not work with that person. So flag it, say it's a conflict of interest, publicly respond. One of the absolute best public responses I found to a review like this, I wish I had a screenshot it was a home inspector that determined, hey, this was a seller who was very, very mad that the person backed out of the sale because of what the inspection found. So in the response, it was extremely professional. And they said something to the effect of, um, you know, we're, we're really sorry that you were not able to complete this sale of your home. Um, as you can clearly see, from our inspection report, we are extremely thorough and we take a lot of pride in representing the buyer well. In the future, if you want to list your home, we recommend working with us on a pre-sell inspection. <laughs> and so they're saying, hey, don't be mad that we did such a good job on our inspection that it actually was problematic for you. And next time do a pre-sell inspection. So fantastic response, witty, professional, not um, defensive or rude in any way. And anybody reading that is going to laugh and say, that's fantastic. This is the inspector I want to work with because they're clearly on my side. So Dan asked, how are you getting customers to leave keywords? I think I have some examples here. So here's a fantastic review, right? We go through that anatomy of a good review, the five R's. We've got employee names, we've got services, photos. Like I said, you're not always going to have um, an opportunity with photos in your industry, but that's okay. If you get them, that's going to be super powerful. The simplest way that you get people to leave keywords is actually by including some of that language specifically in your review request. So when you're asking someone for a review, yeah, good people did all we asked, right? This isn't helping this painting company. This is helping this painting company to come up when anyone's looking at stucco, when anyone's looking for, you know, priming and painting, patio, so many things. Mm -hmm. So if you have a good system in place, ideally as automated as possible, you're not only asking them to leave you a review on Google, but you're saying something like we, we really enjoyed working on your patio floor, or we really enjoyed completing your sewer scope inspection. We really were, we're so thankful you allowed us to do your residential home inspection plus radon testing, something like that. So this is kind of the secret sauce to one of the things that our Boolean review software does. We pull those keywords from your ISN or Spectora or whatever system you're using. And we include that in a very organic way into the review request to get rid of any friction and make it super easy for a customer to see the request and immediately know, ooh, I know what I want to say. I'm going to brag about Jonathan and his crew. I'm going to brag about how they fixed this specific issue at my house, or I'm going to brag about how easy it was to schedule with this person for my well inspection, something like that. So just put it in front of them. 
make it really, really obvious what you're asking them to do and don't give them too many decisions. So don't include a Yelp, Facebook, Google, Bing review link because the customer is going to leave zero reviews instead of four reviews. It's too confusing. Tell them exactly what you're asking them to do and exactly what would be the most beneficial. So here are the names. Here's the project. Here's the Google link. And here's just another example of that. Photos, services, names, right? Versus someone that left a great review. You know, they clearly were happy. They said all this stuff, professionalism, punctuality, quality, responsiveness, value, but nothing that made it searchable. So I hope I addressed that question. Okay. So here's what I want to do before we, um, or as we're opening up to some more Q&A. In order to just, like I said, my goal was just to provide a ton of information and hopefully a ton of value to you guys. This is something that every home inspector could start leveraging because nobody's doing it. So if you're the only one in your area getting people to leave high quality reviews, you're going to rank highly for so many more keywords than any of your competitors. So what, what, uh, what I want to do is that if you just scan this QR code, it's going to take you to a link on our website. Um, if you fill out that form, you're going to get a, a template or a design um, from one of our designers for a review business card with a QR code so that if you're at the job site and you're talking to that home buyer, you can just show them your, the business card and they, or give it to them and they can scan the QR code. So this isn't you know as streamlined or as easy as working with us with a review software, but it's just something that we want to provide to get your, you know, your toe in the water and see what it's like to start asking for reviews. We're also going to email you a seven minute super cut from all of those interviews with the SEO experts. So if you are like, man, SEO is something I've spent a lot of time and energy on, fill this out and we're going to just send you a bunch of additional knowledge. And this is what it's going to look like. So you can give us this information and we're going to um, ask you for like a, a logo to make the little, the business card and everything. If you want to talk with us more about the review software, check this box. If you just want to see an example of what our reviews look like, because you're curious, because you want to try to copy them, I don't care. Um, check the second box or check both, right? But the second one is going to actually send you an email and a text like you're a customer and you can see what a, a review request that we create looks like. Because this is the most effective that we found on the market. And it really shows all those best practices. So I'm going to leave this up as I answer questions so that you guys can scan that. All right. I use ISN and have a seven day and 60 day reminder request for a review with links to Google for reviews as prompted or for, for reviews as prompts. We also incentivize our inspectors with extra money if they get a four or a five star review and they promote it for the extra money. That is fantastic. Um, so ISN, Spectora, every system out there probably has some some built-in way to send a message. So if you're not doing anything, that's the first thing you should try to do is just try to send those out and then observe what happens. The problem is they're not um, nearly as highly customized. And so you may not be converting as highly as you could otherwise, um, but it's still a good option. It's still, I never want to, I never want to discourage people from, from asking like that. Um, you know, we just have the benefit of literally sending hundreds of thousands of review, review requests and looking at the data and saying, this works, this doesn't work to try to just keep optimizing. So you may be able to get a higher conversion rate, but asking is the most important thing for sure. And I think the incentivizing inspectors is also really powerful. Um, one thing that I love, I, I love the idea of incentivizing, but when you when your business, when you're ready to just, you know, absolutely blow up on, on Google and get a ton of reviews that can get super expensive. <laughs> so if you actually were getting 35 or 40% of your customers to leave you reviews, that's amazing. And it's going to be really expensive. And so one little shift or potential tweak is, um, 
we have a lot of businesses we work with that shift to doing like a review of the week or a review of the month. So it might be like a higher bonus and they're doing like a shout out company wide to say, Hey, this was a fantastic review that Ryan got here are all the things that made it so great. Clearly, you know, did a really good job making this customer happy so that they still have that incentive. It's still kind of a fun competitive part of the culture, but you're not paying double, triple what you could be for, for getting those reviews. Okay. Greg asked, we use blip. There's no option for suggestions on how to write the review. Does your platform offer such? Uh, yes, we do. So this is one of the things that was, it was a really fantastic journey in developing our system and we continue to develop, but having been working in home service industries, we saw, we just kind of were dreaming, like, what can we do to make these even better? The first thing, okay, we're going to add a headshot. Awesome. A headshot of the person that was just at your house. Okay. Now we're going to add the names of the people like that scheduled you or a care coordinator or things like that. Ooh, what if we add what type of project it was? So all of this has just been an evolution and it continues to evolve with our system as Google reveals more and more through their forums or through um, public releases saying, hey, this is now something that we, we at Google are looking at, right? So our algorithm is now factoring this in. And then we go and say, okay, great. How can we, how can we make that more powerful in our system? Oh my gosh. <laughs> great question. Russell asked, if we use your services, will the incessant and non-stopping calls from companies claiming they work for Google stop? Oh my goodness. So they probably, it's possible they work for Google. They probably work with Google. <laughs> they probably run Google ads and things like that. Um, it's just super hard to, to get off some of those lists sometimes. And the easiest way is to say, we are not interested in your services, you know, or we want to be unsubscribed or taken off or opt out of your calls. <laughs> because the fact of the matter is, you can run a business, have a Google business profile and rank really, really highly and not be paying for anything through Google. And even with our services, like if we're offering a, a review software, right, to help people get to Google easier and all that, if you stop working with us, you still own that Google business profile. You still own all those reviews and those reviews go with you. So that is, it's not ads. It's not um, like Yelp does a, a, a lot of people really just like Yelp. They do a lot of like price gouging of like just keeping, continuing to add more and more things onto a package. Um, that's one of the reasons why we philosophically support using Google as the, the best platform um, at this point is because pretty much all your reviews show up and there's nothing you can do to like pay to remove other people's ads or anything like that. So that means no one's going to be bothering you as much about paying for those things. Timothy asked, is Google biz now Google maps? Um, Google. So this, I'm assuming you're talking about managing your profile. So Google business profiles, like I said, formerly known as Google, my business. So Google business profiles can now be managed either through business.google.com where you go and like, look at all your business listings you own, or you can actually manage it directly in maps. So if you're in your Google maps and you're logged into the account that owns that business profile, it actually now lets you like edit and view everything just in maps. So it's not one in the same as Google maps, but it can be managed through it now. Okay, let me look at Q&A and chat. See if I missed anything. I think I answered that. So just once again, addressing Dan's question from the Q&A section. Um, you get customers to use keywords in reviews just by putting them intentionally in front of the customer in the review request. So you're not saying, hey, copy and paste this. You're just using that language and psychologically they're going to say, hey, I'm going to go write this same thing. So it's pretty straightforward. 
Um, AJ, are you able to see any questions that I maybe missed or does anybody have any other questions? I think you got most of them or all of them actually. Timothy had that question, but you and he retyped it and we got it. Okay. Awesome. And is everyone that wanted to, have you guys had any issues or are you able to use the QR code? This is one of those things where I don't want to take it for granted. If you have your phone and you open your camera and you, you look like you hold it up, like you're going to take a picture of the QR code, you don't actually, um, take a picture, but it'll pop up a link and you tap on it and it'll take you to our website. Ooh, okay. Gregory asked a question about Google guaranteed businesses. So this is something that is a little bit vague with um, Google's public explanation of algorithms. So a Google guaranteed business, I, I don't believe is actually going to um, organically rank higher. So you can be a Google guaranteed business and that allows you, you know, certain opportunities or benefits, but it's not going to actually directly um, make you rank higher to my knowledge, which is why a lot of home service businesses aren't pursuing that super heavily. All good. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, AJ, you guys record and, and send this out, right? So if, if others want to share it or if anyone else wants to um, check out that QR code, it should be pretty easy to access it, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And I can, um, if you send me that QR or that screenshot of that, I can actually put that on uh, on your webinar and people can see that whenever they click on the link. Okay. Oh, I, I am seeing a question. question. Yep. Yeah. Being asked to give manager permission for QR code. So um, that is actually for a widget for the website. So you don't need to do that. That was, that's for some other giveaway. <laughs> so ignore that. Um, if uh, we have a separate link to that, that I can send out, if someone wants just a widget to display reviews on their website, we can offer that. Um, and in that case, you would just make us a manager on your business listing. And then that allows us to pull those reviews in real time for your website. But don't worry about that, Donnie. You'll still get the uh, business card, the QR business card and uh, the super cut, even without doing that. Yes, no problem. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thanks, Natalie. Oh, we got one more. One more. Okay. So Greg asked, when you set up a Google profile, it asks for areas you service. Does Google use these also when someone is searching for an area outside your actual address? Yes. Um, so that's when, if you search on a map, it'll, it won't show a specific point. It'll show a yellow kind of highlighted area. So you can say, hey, this is the area that I service. But then if all of your reviews are from like a different area, Google's going to start kind of preferentially shifting where it says you service that area. Or let's say you live two hours away, like your physical address you put in is two hours away from the service area that you say you service. That's going to be suspicious also. So you want that service area to be pretty centrally around like where your business address is, where you live. And that's going to make it the most accurate. Um, and if someone searches for a, a business outside, like they're outside of that service area. So let's say you're in kind of a rural area. If someone searches for you and they're 20 minutes outside of that service area, they can still find you if you're the most relevant in the closest proximity. You're still going to come up. But what you're telling Google is that this is the service area that I typically am working in. And so it's going to try to, in general, use that proximity of search to help find you. All right. Thank you, everybody.